What was the first Quentin Tarantino movie that you watched? I think it was Pulp Fiction. I think it was. Um, but very close to the same time, I watched um, True Romance and linked them, you know, as the, as the screenwriter, uh, or as Tarantino being the screenwriter. And um, True Romance really knocked me out. Like Pulp Fiction obviously did for the obvious reasons that everybody else kind of feels. You know, it was like this new voice. And if you miss Reservoir Dogs, and a lot of people came to Reservoir Dogs through Pulp Fiction, and I'm one of those, but also True Romance. So those two together, I was like, wow, Mia Wallace and Alabama Whirly. Like I was just, yeah, I was knocked out by those gals. Now what about Kevin Smith too, if you're growing up on the East Coast? Oh yeah, I loved Kevin Smith. Okay, so yeah. so, so sort of this whole like indie whole filmmaker. The whole movement. Right, like, okay. Yeah. And, and Linklater falls into that too. Sure. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> and did you ever envision when you when you saw those films that one day you'd be interviewing all the actors that he worked with? No. It was never was, something. I, no, I definitely wasn't thinking that way then. I was <laughs> I was a model actress. <laughs> uh, so I um, limited myself in that respect, I think. <laughs> um, and I have, have grown up into who I should be. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely didn't think one day I'd be sitting here talking about Quentin Tarantino and sitting with those fantastic people. Yeah. What made you decide to make the film? I and mean, you had already done a film about Richard Linklater. So what was it? How many I co-directed Linklater with Michael Dunaway. And we, so being, I spent a lot of time in Austin. Um, so I was familiar with more familiar with Rick and his work because he kind of runs that town. You know, there's a lot of that. I was an extra on the Newton Boys. Oh, nice. Um, uh, so when I heard that Michael Dunaway was doing this project, he was he was kind of looking for a partner, and I and I happened to be at the right place at the right time. Actually, it was a Kevin Smith interview that we met that he was doing for Linklater. So that's how that happened. It was very organic and amazing. Um, and Michael has moved on to do other things and left me to do kind of, you know, move on with Tarantino on my own. But that's how that came to be. It was, it was very natural and easy and awesome. So when you saw how much fun and easy the process was with the Linklater film as, as a, being a co-director or writer on it, what made you think, you know, I want to do this one and I want to do it on my own? Well, I, um, I really, I've realized this as I've been talking about why I decided to move on to this, because it's not something I really thought about. You know, I just, I was like, oh, I'm, I love this, I'm doing this. Um, but the part that I really love about it was finding out things that are, are misunderstood you know, and either debunking or digging deeper into. So for example, with Linklater, um, what we learned as we were talking to people, and even around Austin, what I would hear, oh, he's very laid back and he's very easygoing. And as we did these interviews, I was like, he's not, he's not laid back in that sense. Like he's very intense and knows exactly what he wants to do. And I found that fascinating. I was like, wow. I was like, this idea that people have isn't who that person is. But, Let's show that. Let's like really show that side of it and how that affects the filmography and where things come from. So to move into Tarantino um, on my own, I think I was really driven by the misunderstanding of his female characters. Um, and, and what I would hear again about Quentin was that he was very, um, it's very nice. And Quentin's very nice. And when you see him, in interviews or the idea that we have of Quinn. Nice wasn't the word that would normally come to mind. So I was like, what, what is that? You know, what is that? Where is that coming from? So digging into, um, we're not even digging into allowing people, what I love about this documentary, the, the, like not interviewing the director and sitting with people and his friends and colleagues and just letting them go and just discuss you're like, oh, that's the real breath of Quentin. That's what that is. That's where it comes from. So, and obviously we'll get more into that, but that was, for me, really exciting. And to be involved with people that do what they love to do and are really good at doing. Like, that's attractive, 
no matter what industry, right? If somebody's really good at like, um, you know, watching the, the fastest person on the planet, like you wanna watch that race. Like it's really thrilling to see people do what they're really good at and Quentin's a master of filmmaking. So yeah, I was really excited to, to move on into it on my own in that way. I understand you've been a sales agent for some time. You have Wood Entertainment? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. At what point did you reach out to Quentin and say you wanted to make this movie? How was it? And what was the day like when you got the word? Oh, what day was that? I remember how I felt. I remember it was on the phone. I think I might have been in the car. Um, but it was Linklater, the Linklater doc had just come out, I think. And I was ready to, to move, you know, I really wanted to, to dig into Quentin. Um, and he was, I think he was still in production on Hateful Eight when we started. Because, he, so Quentin wanted to see the Linklater doc. He's like, well, who is this girl, you know? <laughs> so I was like, oh, here's a link. And they're like, no, Quentin doesn't watch links. <laughs> so we had to wait for the DVD to be printed because, uh, you know, and send him the DVD while he was shooting. And he took time to watch it, which is amazing. Um, but in a, like, he just loves films. And that's just one of those things that proves again how much he does. Like, he'll stop in the middle of production and watch a film. <laughs> like, that's pretty amazing. Um, so he watched it and gave us his blessing. He said, he, you know, he loved that it concentrates on the filmography and not being an expose. You know, like, that, my interest is definitely not Ooh, what's, you know, the, the, the juicy stuff that people don't know about Quentin. That, that's not exciting to me. Um, and obviously that showed in the Linklater documentary, which was great. So he, he allowed us to keep going or allowed us to move forward with, with his doc. Um, but I remember getting the information. I was like, oh, cool. So I can go. And there was probably like a half hour later where I was like, Quentin Tarantino watched my first piece and liked it enough to say yes. Like that, I just got chills. That was, that was very surreal. I was, and there's, there hasn't been another doc about him. Oh. And I doubt it's because of lack of trying from, sure. from other filmmakers, you know? So, so the slow realization of what that actually meant, like, I still can't articulate, I guess. It's, pre it's a pretty amazing feeling and how mm -hmm. special I, I felt, I guess. <laughs> I was like, wow, cool, I can do this. He liked my first film. And ultimately when I met him, he, you know how he quotes um, from movies? Like he, he knows everything, like everything <laughs> stays in his head. So when I finally met him, he quoted a couple of lines from that Linklater doc. Oh, wow. And I think I almost fell off my chair. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. So, yeah. But he's just a lover of film. Like, he he, he, all of it. All of it. Including my little link later, Doc. Yes, that's what I was wondering is when you got that call or where, whatever it was, the text, that were you almost like, oh no, now, like, this is really happening? Like, that came was later. It scary? Oh, okay. Yeah. I would <laughs> yeah. Tell you I'd be totally freaked that, out. That like, eventually came where I was like, this better be good. You know, like, I, I better do a good job. I better hold this carefully. Sure. Yeah. You know? But that was an initial. Initial, I was like, okay, I'm just going to do my thing. Okay, cool. Move forward. And then, yeah. That carried through the whole documentary, I would say, that feeling of, of holding it carefully. It, you know, because it just because these people are sharing really intimate details about their special relationship with this amazing director. It, and that was a lot, that was a lot to care for, you know? So through the entire process, it, it was very much like, how, how do I care for this individual person and what they're saying and, and, and pull out what's important to the Tarantino conversation as a filmmaker and as a person, right? Um, that, that feeling never went away. That, that was a constant, like, hold <laughs> of responsibility. Yeah, there is. There's a trust factor, and then if you don't want to break it, because then 
they may not want the interview out or whatever. And it is a lot of responsibility, even even doing these. It's just you know people are willing to come and sit in front of yeah, you. Yeah, it's and a lot. Tell it's, you. Yeah, I, I don't think people necessarily get. You definitely give a lot of care to that, which is wonderful. Like I feel like I'm a good cans. When when I sit with, I want people to feel the same way. You know, it's like it's okay. And if you say something, and you're like, oops, I shouldn't have said that. I'm not going to go put that on the screen. <laughs> that, right. You I think know? that's the big thing that yeah. knowing that you're not going to go and try to like spin it because it'll get more right. of a reaction. So right. Especially yeah. in this this uh, landscape that we're yes. in currently. <laughs> Definitely. And people look to misconstrue. And I think people are set up to mis misconstrue so that it does get more attention. You know? Yeah.